The Software Defined Networking and Open Flow webinar was made possible by the sponsorship of Big Switch Networks. Big Switch Networks are developing an SDN application for network virtualization, and you can get their open source SDN controller called Floodlight at the openflowhub.org. You can find Big Switch at bigswitch.com. This webinar is just one of many vendor independent data center and virtualization webinars available on IP Space. To learn more about them, visit ipspace.net. And don't forget that you get immediate access to all of them with a yearly subscription. So now that ends the presentation. Uh, I've pretty much covered uh, what OpenFlow is, and you should have understanding of what the protocol is inside of the networking. And now we wanted, we've want we talked about software-defined networking. What I want to show you is a practical demonstration of the product in real live action. And to do that, from Big Switch, we've got Dan. Dan, how are you? I'm doing well, Greg. Yourself? Are you ready for this? Absolutely. Really excited to, to give the world a first sneak peek of what we're doing here at Big Switch. Okay. And uh, so let's just get right into it. Sounds great. So let me first tell you a little bit about the, the topology that we have here. Um, what we're going to show you is a demonstration of network virtualization using the, uh, using the OpenFlow protocol. So I have a, a couple of, of switches within my environment. You can see two of the switches are uh, physical and two of the switches are virtual. Um, and uh, I have a series of hosts attached to these uh, these switches that happen to be, again, some physical and some virtual. You can see I have a number of virtual machines here connected to our software-based switches and then a uh, physical device here attached to, to one of our physical switches. Now, the, the concept that I'm going to show you is a concept of, of network virtualization and something that, uh, that a big switch we call a big virtual switch. And this is really the ability to take a series of devices that are attached to your network and make them appear as if they are in, in isolated networks, sort of analogous to the VLAN concepts that we have today. But the, uh, the interesting thing here is that we are doing this without the concept of VLANs, and we can do this not only within a rack or a row um, or a data center, but we can actually span data centers with this type of, of technology. So I'm going to create um, what we call the big virtual switch, and we'll just call this GregNet. And within this network, I'm going to define what we call an interface rule. And this interface rule is essentially a membership policy that determines what devices anywhere in your network that you want to participate in this virtual network. So I'm going to define this interface rule and just call this uh, subnet uh, 10. Okay. Now, within this, um, within this interface rule, I'm going to tell the system that I want to capture every single device that is in the 10.0.2.0/24 network. And what that's going to allow me to do is, any time a device comes online with an IP address associated with that network, we're going to collect that and put it into this virtualized network or this big virtual switch. Um, any Again, anywhere in your network, whether it's in, in uh, the same rack, the same row, the same data center, uh, that concept is, is really irrelevant. So when I, when I actually look at the, um, at the BVS that we've created, I can jump in and now show the interfaces associated with that big virtual switch, as we call it. And you can see within that big virtual switch, we've created a number of, of interfaces that are associated with all of the devices that we saw within that given subnet that we define that uh, interface rule for. So now we have the, the concept of, of policy-based networking that is not only dynamic but very elastic. So as devices come online within this subnet, we simply are able to collect them and put them in the appropriate network. As devices leave, we can shrink that network um, and do some interesting things with, uh, with uh, the isolation of broadcast traffic. Um, and this really gives you sort of the, the second piece of, of um, the elastic workload concept, which is elastic networking. Uh, virtualization is sort of the See, now, first piece. And what, what I find amazingly brilliant about this is you've actually created a virtual, virtual VLAN by creating an entire switch, which is a VLAN, but by defining it by source IP address. So any time a server comes up as a 10.0.2 in that subnet, it will automatically be attached to that virtual switch. Exactly. So you, you think of the conversation that happens today between a server admin and a, a network admin. Um, the, the server admin mm -hmm. says, well, I, I'm going to set up a new machine and ha it's supposed to belong in, in this subnet. 
and the, the network admin simply says, well, go put it in this rack and connect it to the switch port, and then I'll, I'll provision that switch port for you sometime in the next couple of weeks. The, the conversation now can be, well, go plug that somewhere into the network, and your network is automatically ready for you, um, and you can have Bing. network services. I've got a virtual switch which gathers up all of that subnet, and now I can attach it to this firewall interface or whatever I like. And the other perhaps most exciting thing for those people who are working in very large data centers is no VLAN tags. No VLAN tags. We're not so limited to, to... No VLAN Not tags. limited to VLANs. We're not limited to, to technology like Q and Q. Um, you could have tens or hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of, of these big virtual switches within your, your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. No MPLS, no LDP, no BGP. Exactly. Now, one of the other um, things about this is, of course, is people will say, well, is it stuck to the physical port? But it isn't because it just looks for the source address and the source address can be anywhere in the network. So with the flow table that we talked about in the presentation, the flow rule can be in every switch in your network if you if you need it to be. Exactly. Uh, we, we dynamically are, uh, are monitoring the network and if a device moves, say through the, the concept of, of vMotion or somebody even unplugs a physical device and replugs it in somewhere else in the network, we automatically detect that as packets flow. Um, and of course, we have other mechanisms that we can uh, that we can leverage, and not quite ready to, to talk about today, um, that are outside of the network to to allocate these uh, these uh, big virtual switches as well. And you know what I love about this is I don't have to sit there and twitch my fingers on a keyboard to put a switch interface into a VLAN. <laughs> I'm really excited. It, about it that. really enables <laughs> the network administrator to to shift away from the boring day-to-day -day change control stuff and focus more on the interesting stuff, which is architecture and, and policy-based management. Indeed. Now, I want to point out that this is pre-release, so this is not quite the commercially available, but the demo gods have been kind to us today, Dan. Absolutely. <laughs> but it demonstrates to you what it can do in the long term. All right, Dan, thanks so much for taking the time to give us a quick demo of the product. I'm really looking forward to seeing what it does in the next few months. Thanks for having me, Greg. To get more information about IPSpace webinars, please visit ipspace.net.